All right, well, let's move on to uh, lesson number three. Lesson number three, let's talk about we are all sinners. Number one, why someone must admit that they are a sinner? No, um, number one, why must someone must admit that they are a sinner? Letter A, the first thing we must do in order to get someone saved is to get them to realize that they are sinners. Uh, they have to realize that they are a sinner, letter B, because if someone is not a sinner, that's your fill-in, then they will not need a savior. If they are not a sinner, they will not need a savior. Number two, no one is perfect. The Bible says there's none righteous. So letter A, I have found that it's easier for someone to first agree that they are not perfect before they agree that they are a sinner. Some people have absolutely no problem agreeing, I am a sinner. But some people get highly offended if you just knock on their door and you're like, hey, you are a sinner, all right? So sometimes what I've found works great is to kind of ease people into that idea by first stating the fact that there is, uh, that, that, that there's, there's none righteous, the fact that we are not perfect. So letter B is gonna kind of explain how this conversation may go. Now before I, we get into letter B, let me explain something. We're now getting into the present, presentation of the gospel. Before we talk about how to dress, how to get ready for, how to introduce yourself, how to ask the questions. Now you've got someone who has agreed. I want to hear what you have to say. So where are you going to start? I usually start in Romans 3.10. But let me explain to you how I explain the gospel and how I think people should explain the gospel. I basically use a three-step process. Read, reveal, and review. All right? Our goal at Verity Baptist Church is to be extremely thorough with the gospel. Most soul winners are really shallow and don't go into a lot of depth. So in order to be able to make sure you're, you're, you're doing things thoroughly, what I mean by read, reveal, and review, you're going to see this throughout the lesson, is you read the passage. That's extremely important, all right? People get saved by the Word of God. They don't get saved by your illustrations. They don't get saved by your smooth talk. The Word of God is what they need. So we need to make sure we read the passage. We need to make sure, and, and usually I, you know, I would encourage you to memorize all the verses, but I almost never quote the verses to the, to the people. Uh, I want them to see it. Now, oftentimes I'll have my Bible open to the passage. Whoa. And uh, let me pick that up. I'll have my Bible open to the passage, and I'll be quoting it because I'm not really reading it, but I'm showing it to them. Like, I want them to see what the Bible says. So, read the passage, review the truth. What that means is explain the verse, explain it thoroughly, make sure they understand, and then review the concept. We like to ask a question to make sure they understand. We don't move on to the next point until they understand the first point, okay? We don't move on from there. So, you read the passage, you reveal the truth, uh, and then you review uh, the concept. So here's how this conversation may go. Romans 3.10. So let's say somebody said, you know, sure, I'd like to hear what the Bible says. Say, oh, the first thing I'll do is say, well, let me show you what the Bible says. In Romans chapter number 3 and verse 10, the Bible says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. And I'll explain it something like this. I'll say, you see that word, you see this word here where it says uh, righteous? See that first part of the word, it says right? Someone who's righteous is someone who always does right or is without wrong. You know, maybe a word you and I would use would be like perfect. And what this verse is saying is that there is none righteous, meaning there's none perfect, no, not one. So I read the verse, I revealed the truth, I explained to them, so then here's how I review it. So I'll simply say something like, you didn't think you were perfect, right? Now most people are going to be like, yeah, of course not, I'm not perfect. Now look, I've literally been out soul winning and, you know, I've been soul winning for a long time, decades, uh, over a decade. And, uh, and I've had people say to me, I've had two or three people say to me, like, I am perfect. There are some people out there who believe in, in a doctrine called sinless perfection where they think they're perfect. Well, guess what? We're not moving on from there, okay? Because the first thing you need to realize is you're not perfect. If you're perfect, then we need to be worshiping you, okay? Then you're Jesus, all right? And you're not. So you're not perfect. So, you know... It, it's as simple as that. As is written, there's none righteous, no one. What this verse is saying, that no one's righteous, no one's perfect, no one's without wrong. We've all messed up. We've all made mistakes. Do you agree with that? You didn't think you were perfect, did you? Well, of course, no one's perfect. Just move on to the next verse. Does that make sense? But you want to go through that process. Read, reveal, uh, review. Now, let me say this. That's a really easy concept for people to understand. Most people are going to grasp that easily. Other concepts get a little more difficult, but just so you kind of understand what we're doing. Number three, we are all sinners. That's your word there. We are all sinners, for all have sinned. Okay, so num uh, letter A, we do not want people to feel as if we are attacking them or 
you know, pointing at them specifically, you know, as you are a sinner. You know, you are, you know we don't want to um, make people feel like we're just attacking them personally uh, when, we, when we present the gospel. So this is why we start by pointing out that no one's perfect. We begin with that concept, no one's perfect. Number two, when we talk about sin, make sure you include yourself. We're all sinners. And that's just good, you know, for those of you guys that preach, you know, people don't, people don't respond well when all you're doing is pointing at people. You know, oftentimes, even when I'm here, I'm like, look, I, I'm, I'm working on this. Or I, you know, I just realize we're all sinners and, and try to use that terminology. We're all sinners. I'm a sinner. You know, and all the times I'll tell people. So, so let's, so the next verse I'll show them is Romans 3.23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So I just showed them Romans 3.10. Then I said, well, let me show you this verse. This verse takes it a step further. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then I'll explain the verse. I'll say something along these lines. I'll say, you know, the Bible defines the word sin as the transgression of the law, meaning when we break God's law, we've sinned. So, for example, God says, you know, I shouldn't lie. So if I tell a lie, that's a sin. Or God says I shouldn't steal. So if I steal something, that's a sin. And what this verse is saying is saying for all have sinned. That means I've sinned. That means you've sinned. Now, here's the, here's the, review, the review. Would you agree with that, that we're all sinners? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, the Bible says we're all sinners. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Well, here's why I showed you that verse. Because in Romans 6.23, you see, and we just transitioned to, but I review, I make sure they agree with that. We're all sinners. They agree. They're not, they're not uh, uh, perfect. You know, number four, how the questions should be, let, so let's talk about the questions real quickly. How the questions should be used throughout the conversation. Letter A. The questions should be used for the purpose of bringing attention to key words in the verse. When I ask a question, I'm not just asking questions for the sake of asking questions. And if you see Jesus in the Gospels, how he presents the Gospel, he's often asking questions and engaging people in uh, communication. You could explain the entire Gospel, and I've seen people do this, and have that person just listen to you for 15 or 20 minutes and never engage them in, in conversation, but they're probably going to understand better and they're probably going to enjoy the conversation better if you allow them to talk too. So a lot of times you can do that by asking them questions. So number four, letter A, the questions should be used for the purpose of bringing attention to key words in the verse. There's key things you want them to look. Letter B, use questions to see if the person is agreeing with you or not. Use phrases like, would you agree that? You know, do you believe this? Uh, and uh, letter C, the questions should be worded so that people do not feel as if they are being tested or judged, okay? Uh, use phrases like, are you familiar with? You know, sometimes I'll, 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 I'll say, there'll be a word. And I'll say, are you familiar with this word? You know, um, I used to, I, when I was a younger soul winner, I used to say things like, do you know the definition of this word? And then somebody, somebody actually said to me, like, you know what, I, don't, I, didn't, I didn't start this conversation with you to be tested. You know, I'm not in school or whatever. Like, I actually offended them because I think some of the words, they didn't know the definitions, you know. And I realized, like, whoa, you know, I just offended this person because I said, do you know what this word means? And it's like, they feel like I'm judging them, you know, or whatever, because they, they had some hang up on, they didn't know what that word meant. So try to use words that are graceful. You know, instead of saying, do you know the definition of this word? Now I say, are you familiar with this word? You know, I'm sure you've heard this word before, grace. Do, do you know what the word grace means? Yeah, well, I've heard the word grace, but I don't really know what, what it means. Well, here's what it means, it, you know, and you explain it to them. So use words that are graceful. And this is, you know, as a soul winner, as a Christian, you want to be careful about the words you use. The Bible says, let your speech be always with grace, seasoned with salt, that ye may know how ye ought to answer every man. And so often we offend people by the things that we say, and we don't, you know, just think, how is this person, the, the person I'm speaking to, how is this making them feel when I'm saying this? You know, so try to be very, uh, you know, just uh, think about the words that you are using. So let us see. The questions should be worded so that people do not feel as if they are being tested or judged. Now, here's what I want to do, okay, before we move on to the next question, because we're now actually looking at passages in the Bible and explaining them. We're reading, we're reviewing, uh, we're reading, we're revealing the truth in the passage, and then we're reviewing it. So what I want to do is, I know some of you are new soul winners, I want to help you out, and I'm going to give, what we're going to do is, I'm going to, 
I want you to take your Bibles. I don't know if you brought your Bible with you, but if you write Bible, go with me to Romans chapter number 3 and verse 10. All right, Romans 3.10. Here's what I want to do. I want you to take a pen if you have a pen, a highlighter if you have a highlighter, and I want you to underline Romans, Romans 3.10 because that's the first verse you're going to go to, and you want to have it underlined or, or highlighted would even be better so you can find because sometimes especially when you're new you might like be nervous and you you looked at Romans 3 10 a hundred times but when you're in front of somebody you're having trouble seeing it so maybe uh, highlight it Romans 3 10 and then here's what I want you to do right in front of Romans 3 10 I want you to write the number one all right and that kind of helps you to realize that's the first verse I'm gonna go to now this is assuming you're using my plan your plan can change in the future that's fine but especially if you're brand new you don't have a plan you don't have a structure let me help you out and give you these things okay so Romans 310 here's what I want you to do write a number one in front of Romans 310 and if you have a highlighter uh, highlight the word underline uh, underline the verse and then here's what I want you to do next to Romans 310 underneath Romans 310 somewhere around Romans 310 I want you to write the reference Romans 323 all right because after Romans 310 we're going to go to Romans 323 now when you're new you might be nervous and you might say uh, I know to start in Romans 310 I can't remember what's that next verse you know you have a mental block but if you write down next to it you know the next verse I'm going to Romans 323 all right so write a number one in front of Romans 3.10, somewhere between Romans 3.10, or by Romans 3.10, underneath Romans 3.10, somewhere around there, write the reference Romans 3.23 so that you know that after Romans 3.10, you're going to move on to Romans 3.23, okay? And we're going to, I'm going to, we're going to keep doing that in your Bibles as we go on uh, through the lessons. And by the end, you'll have an outline in your Bible telling you where to start, what's the next verse, what reference to go to next, and things like that.